Welcome to another episode of Simmer Clips. Today's community question is related to our course JavaScript for Digital Marketers. And it visits a topic which I've written about a lot in the past, and I have kind of a love-hate relationship with the topic, because we're going to be talking about iframes. So let's take a look at what today's question is. How do I work with third-party iframes when browsers block storage access in them? So this is related to how iframes actually work. When you create an iframe in a site, it actually creates an embedded browser window within that site itself. Whatever happens in that browser window is isolated from the rest of the site, the rest of the navigation. The solution to working with embedded cross-site iframes relies on a JavaScript method called post message. Post message enables a communication channel between two windows, whether they're iframe and the parent page or just two separate windows in the browser. Post message is a bilateral communication way, so both the receiving end and the sending end need to be aware of each other. You can't just send messages to another window without that window having a mechanism to accept them. In this Simmerclips topic, we're going to take a look at how to build both the sending part and the receiving part in JavaScript. Please take a look at the article as well because we have all the elaborate code samples there and I'll also share with you a custom HTML tag template for GTM which allows you to set this up very easily by just editing some configuration options. In this video we're going to be working on the Team Simmer site though. So this is the site that I am actually navigating right now. It's the parent page of the browser window. And just for the purposes of this topic, I've embedded an iframe into this site. I added the red border so you can clearly see that it's an iframe. And the iframe contents come from another site, a completely separate site from this. It's the simohava.com blog in this case. And now I want to build a system where the iframe can communicate with the parent page and vice versa. So let's start with the iframe to parent page communications first. The first thing we have to do is establish the listening or the receiving mechanism. And for that, we'll use the add event listener method, which you've learned about during the JavaScript course. Opening the JavaScript console, we are now in the context of the parent page. And you can see that from this drop down here. This drop down contains all the domains that the current page is communicating with. And you can see that the topmost window is hosted on teamserum.com and it has an embedded window from simohava.com. So right now we're focusing on the top window and we're going to create the listening mechanism first. The syntax is window.addEventListener, so let's do that right now. And then we need to add what we're listening for. So we are actually listening for an event called message. This event is dispatched when a post message from another window is received. And then we need to add the callback. So let's add a function that takes a single argument. The event of the message will be a message event object and it will contain everything that was dispatched from the other window as well as some metadata. The most important piece of metadata you need to check for is the event origin. You need to make sure the message comes from a source that you can trust. So this is an easy way to do it. With this check, we're making sure that the origin of the post message is simohava.com. So it needs to be the origin part of the URL. That's everything up to the first path selector. If the message comes from some other origin, we use the return statement to break away from this listener. Everything that was passed as the contents of the message will be included in the data property of the event object. So we can do something like this to log what was in the post message. And this is actually enough. This way we already have the receiving end up and running. Now we can switch focus to the iframe. So in the selector, choose the iframe domain. Now we are in the context of the iframe. We can verify this by doing a quick check at the page URL. Here you can see that the URL of the current document is simohava.com. So we are in the context of the iframe. So now let's dispatch a message to the parent window. And the easiest way to do this, if you know that the receiving end is the URL the user is actually navigating, you can use the window.top shorthand to access the highest window in the frame hierarchy. So even if there are embedded iframes, so iframes within iframes, you can use window top to access the topmost parent. And the method we're going to use is called post message. The first argument to post message will be the message itself. Now a good practice is to send this as a string and you can use json.stringify to turn objects into strings. If you don't turn it into a string and use just a regular object, the post message will be able to process it. If the object is anything more complicated, like an HTML element, for example, then it will fail in an error. So json.stringify makes sure 
that it handles those edge cases. So let's send a simple object. So the first argument to post message is the message itself. So we're sending a stringified version of an object that has a key value pair of message and hello there. This could be anything you want. It could even be just a string instead of JSON by stringify. It could just be the string hello there, but I'm choosing to send an object. The second argument is important. This is the origin of the window you're dispatching the message to. So in this case, it needs to be teamsimmer.com. If the origin is incorrect, the post message will fail. You could also use the asterisk to send the message to whatever origin you want, but I don't think this is a good practice. I think if you know what the top window is, then you should always use the explicit origin. If you're hosting a booking engine and you never know where it's been embedded at, then the asterisk makes more sense. But in this case, I know very well that the origin of the topmost window is teamserver.com, so I add that here. And this is how you send the post message. Now, when I press enter, the message will be dispatched and the listener in the parent frame should log the contents to the console. And here you can see that it did. It logs the contents as a string in JSON notation. If we wanted to, we could parse this back into an object in the listener that we added to the top frame. But this is how post message works. It requires first a listener to exist and then a post message dispatcher which sends the message to a known origin. Now, if we want to do this the other way around, so send messages from the top window to an iframe, it's slightly more complicated. But first, let's add the listener in the iframe. So first, we make sure that our console context is in the iframe. And now again, we do the origin check because we only want to process messages from known origins. So now we know that the top window that's going to be dispatching the messages is going to be teamsimmer.com. So if the message comes from any other origin, we ignore it. And in this case, we're going to log the message again, but this time we're going to parse it into, back into a JavaScript object because we know that the top window will be dispatching JSON strings. So now we've added the listener, we change the context back to the top page. If you recall, in the iframe, it was easy. You just wrote window.top and it would always reference the topmost window. But how do you do the same from the topmost window downwards? Well, you actually need to fetch a reference to the iframe using DOM methods. So again, we've learned this during the course. We can do query selector for the iframe. In this case, it's easy because this is the first iframe on the page. But if you have multiple iframes, you'll of course need to specify the CSS selector a bit more carefully. Capturing the element itself is not enough. You actually need to get a reference to its content window. So there's a content window property that you need to access next. And when you have this, you now have a reference to the iframe window object. So now you can use post message. So as the first argument, let's pass an object that's ha that has been stringified into JSON. So in this case, it's a theoretical data layer object. For example, we could be iterating through the data layer and sending these objects. It has an event with a, with a value data layer ready, and it has a key called status with the value true. And now if you recall, we need to add the origin of the window where we are dispatching the message to. So in this case, the origin, we know that it is simohub.com. So we add that explicitly here. We could use the asterisk instead, which would send this message as well. But as I said, if you know the origin of the URL you're dispatching the data to, you should use it explicitly. And then we can just close this up and hit enter to send the message. And in this case, we should see a console log that contains the message parsed back into JavaScript by the iframe window. And here you can see it. Here's the message parsed back into a JavaScript object. So this is the long and short of post message. You need to add a listener first to the window receiving the events. And then in the window sending the events, you need to use the post message method on the window object to which you're sending the events. Remember to send the message preferably as a string, but you can also send it as an object as long as it's a simple plain object. And then remember to add the origin of the URL for the window you're dispatching the messages to, or use a wildcard asterisk in case it doesn't matter what the origin is. Remember to check the article out where I have more elaborate examples for GTM as well, showing you a simple custom HTML tag setup that allows an iframe to dispatch all the data layer events to the parent window as they happen.